Hi everyone, so I thought we would start with a new series called Brutally Honest. Um, I mean, our videos have always been very honest. We've always uh, given our thoughts without any censorship or editing. Um, but I thought, let's go deeper. Let's let's uh, explore the real good, bad, and ugly about the different brands that we carry and uh, things that we have a direct experience with. Now, both um, Mike and Lewis are unavailable, so I'm going to do this uh, first series uh, by myself. And I thought we'd start with Macintosh. Why Macintosh? Well, because Macintosh is a very, very big line for us. Our clients love it. I love it. I've been selling it for a long time, and I've owned Macintosh for a very long time. So um, let's uh, go a bit deeper into it and see what uh, I think, and then I'd love to see your comments uh, as well. Okay, Macintosh, the good. Well, right off the bat, great brand. Recognition is fantastic. Uh, we get clients from all over the world. Uh, we get emails from all over the world saying they how, how much they love their Macintosh and, and uh, uh, they have family members who've owned Macintosh, their parents and in some cases grandparents as well. So uh, great brand recognition, very high reliability. Uh, I can't say of course that it is perfect. Nothing that's made by human beings is perfect. But overall very, very good consistency, very good reliability and it's consistently musical. What I mean by musical is that you can play almost all kinds of music through a Macintosh system and enjoy it. Um, the, the terrible recordings will still ter sound terrible, but it's not highlighted as such. Great recordings sound marvelous. Um, another point, high resale value. There are wonderful high-end products out there. Uh, many of them are as expensive, in some cases way more, uh, very few command the kind of resale value uh, per percentage that Macintosh in general um, gives you. Uh, I'll tell you a story that happened, um, I want to say, maybe three years ago. A client of mine contacted me out of the blue and said, Adrian, I need to liquidate. I need to raise money right away. And I said, what happened? He said, well, I just had a falling out with my partner, business partner, and I need to buy him out. And it doesn't matter what I get, I need to get the cash, as much cash as possible to buy them up. I said, no problem, I'll give you a hand. So the things that he bought from us, things like Wilson Audio, MagnaPan, Macintoshes, we were able to sell them very quickly. Macintosh got the most percentage-wise. Um, the, uh, the one thing that he didn't buy from us, but he was very intrigued by, so he bought, I won't mention the brand, it was a pair of amplifiers that cost over $40,000. Brand new, still in the box. Um, it took us close to a year to sell it, and he only got $8,000 for it. This is a, a relatively well-known brand, certainly among audiophiles. Uh, th that was all he got, $8,000 out of $40,000. That was a huge loss for amps that were still in the box. So, nice thing about Macintosh. Um, the factory still makes parts, not everything, of course, but certain parts still for even products that go back uh, decades. Faceplates, for example. Some things cannot be remanufactured, for example, integrated circuits, um, uh, processors, uh, lasers that they used to buy from Sony or Philips. If they're not available, they're not available. But it's good that the factory can still support you with certain things. In my opinion, they look great. Uh, and of course, not just mine, I think a lot of our clients would agree. There's a very high pride of ownership and ultimately very good factory support. If there's typically any kind of issue that I personally cannot resolve very quickly, I can contact the factory and I get an answer very quickly uh, for the client. So I like that about Macintosh. Okay, so that's just a quick overview. Now the bad, and maybe not so much bad, but not so great. Mm -hmm. Musically, they are not the fastest or the most transparent sounding electronics out there. There are amplifiers that uh, will, will let you hear everything. I mean, seriously, crazy transparent. And for some people, this is exactly what they want. Perfect. Macintosh is not like that. You will hear things in the recording, just not in your face, magnified to that uh, level of degree. Um, so keep that in mind. It's relatively expensive 
compared to brands like um, Certain PS Audio, uh, Parasound, NAD, Cambridge Audio. Uh, so great value type of products will be less expensive than Macintosh. However, when you look at Macintosh and compare it to other wonderful high-end products, um, D'Agostino that we carry, uh, CH Precision, Goldman, Griffin, Boulder, Macintosh is a relative bargain. I mean, in my opinion, easily stands in the same league of performance with different strengths and weaknesses, but certainly less expensive. So um, I like that about Macintosh. One thing I don't like about Macintosh, early models, the silk screening can come off. So um, if you've got a product that's about 15, 20, 25 years old and you're cleaning it, you may notice that the silk screening, the, the uh, legend can come off when you wipe it. So be very careful. Uh, of course, some of the very early stuff, you would get pitting or rusting. Again, back then, it's just the composition of the metal. Um, the early face plates where there was headphone jack, if you use it after a while, of course, the, the area around the headphone jack, the black lacquer or whatever you would call that treatment of the, of the uh, face plate would delaminate from the glass itself. So you can actually see little marks and, and things like that. Speakers. This is controversial and, and Macintosh is probably not going to be happy with me when I say this. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Macintosh speakers. They make fine sounding speakers. The, the XR50, the little bookshelves, the XR100s are actually quite good. The really big ones, they're cost no object speakers. I find that I prefer the other brands that we carry, the Sonus Farbers, the, the Martin Logans, the, the uh, Wilson Audios. I just find that they sound better for me. If you have Macintosh uh, speakers, great, you're happy, God bless you. Good for you. I just find that for myself, there are better options. And I guess the market in general tends to agree because when it comes to resale value of Macintosh speakers, they don't do as well as their electronics. So um, that might also be it. And of course, the other thing is to keep in mind, speakers are probably the most personal of all the things that you can buy. So when it comes to speakers, what I love may be excruciating for you and vice versa. So, however, the one speaker I am quite keen to listen to is the new uh, revised ML1s that uh, they just announced, waiting for them to arrive. Another bad, in Toronto, the cost of repair is quite high, mostly because of the labor. Uh, labor rates in, in, in uh, Canada are, are quite expensive. And so when there's an occasion to bring your Macintosh into us for service, and the technician takes a look at it, it can be quite high. So just be aware. It's not something I'm happy about, um, but that's just the cost of, of what it, it is to, to pay somebody to repair things. Um, ugly. This is not good. Um, it won't affect the vast majority of you, but if you ever needed to uh, ship your electronics or sell them and you need to ship them, the cost of the replacement boxes is crazy high. It's, it's hundreds of dollars. It's, Macintosh uh, ships their products typically in two boxes and they're corrugated and they are thick and they are custom made for Macintosh and they're expensive. Um, the dealer markup is minimal, so it's not that. It's just boxes are very expensive. So just be aware, if you can, keep your boxes. Obsolete home theaters and digital products lose their value like crazy. Now, this is not just Macintosh. In general, virtually every home theater product, once the time has come and gone, you're going to lose your shirt on it. Um, I can think of, you know, when Mark Levinson used to make surround sound processors, today they're worth a dime a dozen. Uh, same with uh, virtually every high-end surround sound processor, uh, or even the low-end uh, surround sound receivers. They're not worth very much at all. So just be aware. And the... Um, same with the uh, um, digital products. Uh, early digital products don't hold their value well. Again, this is typical of almost anything that's out there. Just be aware. So anyway, that's my um, first uh, video on um, Brutally Honest. 
Um, in, the neg- in the future, we'll be covering other brands, and hopefully this was enjoyable for you. If you have others, please add to the comments, good, bad, and ugly. I'd love to read and, and uh, see what I might have missed. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.